Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing some book reviews for you, so let's just jump straight into them. The first book I'm going to be reviewing is The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord, and I was sent this book from Bloomsbury, so thank you very much Bloomsbury for this book in exchange for an honest review. I recently went to Vietnam and I bought this book along with me and I had a bath and unfortunately got a little bit water damaged as you can kind of see, so I'm very sad. This book is a really cute YA contemporary following a girl named Paige. It's been a year since Paige Paige's boyfriend of two months died in a swimming accident. Paige's boyfriend drowned. And a lot of people now see Paige as the girl whose boyfriend drowned. Paige has struggled a lot throughout the past year of coming terms to what happened and also coming to terms of how now people treat her differently. And she wants to start living her life normally again. So she comes up with a plan, a list of do to do things. This list includes traveling, joining a club, going to a party, uh, swimming again because she hasn't swimmed since the accident and also dating. There's one boy in particular she has her heart set on and that's Ryan Chase. But when she meets Ryan's cousin, the oh so nerdy Max, things take a turn and Paige's life slowly expands letting Max in and her list doesn't really go to plan in the way she expected. That's all I'm going to say about this book because I don't want to spoil anything, but you can probably kind of guess where this book goes. I knew it from the start. For me, it's about the journey. The journey of how we get to there. And this, this was a great journey. This was such a cute book. There are things in here that I really enjoyed. For example, family is actually really present in this book. I know, shocker, this YA book has a family present. What's happening? I didn't know children in YHA had parents. Did you? They even have grandparents according to this book. I am shook at this new information. I don't know what to do with myself. All jokes aside, friendship is another big present thing in this book. The friendship between Paige and her friends and also between Ryan and his cousin Max. Just anyone in particular. Friendship is really present in this book and the friendship in here is really good. Like no petty bullshit that we sometimes see in the start in other YA books, none of that shit. Just good old great friendship. I haven't read a contemporary in a while, a YA contemporary I should say, and I haven't read one that's just maybe, you know, feel swoony and be like, that was so cute when I finished it. But this, this did it for me. This was fantastic. Really cute, gorgeous, inside and out, even with water damage. And if you're looking for a book that's cute and fluffy, and light and it's gonna make you feel cute things, I'd highly, highly, highly recommend this one. I would rate this one a four and a half maybe out of five stars. Another YA contemporary that I actually really enjoy is Queens of Geek by Jen Wilde. I wasn't sent this book from a publisher. I asked my brother for it, I believe, for my birthday, which was in April. So I only just read it recently. I held off waiting for the perfect moment until when I was really in the mood for it. And I'm glad I did because I loved this one. And I'm glad I read it when I was in the mood for it. Charlie is a vlogger and an actress and she's attending Supercon. Kind of like, I guess, Comic Con or a nerdy pop culture event and she's there to promote her movie and she's also just recently publicly broken up with her longtime boyfriend and there she meets Lisa um, whom has been Tally's crush for many a year and she kind of finds out that this crush hasn't just been one-sided and there might be something there then there's also another kind of love story plot going on in this book I know two love stories and both of them done really well I might just add and this is Taylor and Jamie. Taylor is a very inside the bubble, keeps to what she knows is safe and that she can rely on and trust and is very, I might say insecure, but she needs to have structure. But at Supercon, one of her favourite authors is attending and there's a chance that she might be able to meet this favourite author, but she has to enter this contest, which is completely out of the side of the box for Taylor. Luckily, she has her best friend there, Jamie, to support her along the way. But are they just? best friends. So yes, two love stories in a really cute, short, but really sweet and actually a lot packed in there for such a short little book and I quite quite enjoyed this one. I've attended Oz Comic Con and also another con that I've attended every year for like the past five years now. I'm a nerdy, nerdy little geek. As you can probably tell by my Sailor Moon dress that I'm currently wearing and all my Pop Funkos everywhere 
scattered around on my bookshelf. So it was really fun, one, to find a book centered around um, and set in a con convention. That was really cool. It was also fun to find that Charlie is either bisexual or pansexual. I can't remember which one, but she is one of them. I know, shocking, and it's not like a big deal. That's just kind of who she is, really, um, and that was super exciting. It's been a tiny while since I've read this one, like maybe in a month and a half, but I also want to say that Taylor has autism. I can't 100% remember, but she definitely displayed qualities of it. I can't remember if it was ever confirmed or not, but also that was really cool to see that represented. So it was a lot of representation in this book, which I thoroughly really enjoyed. And it's not a book that I'd recommend just because, you know, it has this bisexual or pansexual character, or it might have a, a character that has autism. No. Whilst it's great that those have those characters in there, those characters don't make this book. What makes this book is the romance, the friendship, the cuteness, the nerdiness, all the references. This book was really, really cute and sweet, and if you're nerdy and romantic and like a good contemporary, I would highly recommend this one. I'd probably again rate this one a four and a half out of five stars. The next book I'd like to review for you is Mirror Mirror by Cara de Villanchi. I know she is an actress. I should maybe know how to pronounce her last name, but I don't, so let's just move on from that and get on to reviewing this book. It's also by Rowan Coleman as well. You'll see in the, the tiny, tiny little writing here. I'm not sure how much of this book Cara wrote and I'm not sure how much of this book Rowan wrote, but either way, I actually quite enjoyed this one, which shocked me a little bit. I was expecting to like it, but I didn't expect to like be like, oh yeah, that was actually quite good. But this book surprised me in that way. First of all, I'd just like to say that the cover is gorgeous, really vibrant, and it stands out. Really nice cover. And I guess I should probably get into what the book is about. So the book follows a group of friends. Each of these friends are misfits and have their own problems. Red deals with an alcoholic mother and a father who is never around to help support them or their mother. Leo has a brother who is in jail and is just recently gonna come out of jail and stir some shit around. And Leo always follows his brother's path, even if it's not the best one. Naomi likes to run away from home to escape her past, but Rose instead, instead of running away from home, turns to boys and alcohol and shit like that um, to escape her past. So basically, all these kids um, they have a great friendship, they're all kind of mucked up, you know, they all have their each problems, but luckily they have this really good strong friendship that they can, for the most part, rely on. But then one day, one of the friends in this group goes missing, it's Naomi, and then she's found half dead, and everyone thinks that Naomi did this to herself, but her friends are like, they just don't believe it. They know Naomi, they know that she's run away before, but they just don't believe Naomi was capable of doing something like this. They believe that something more dark and sinister is going on and they want to get to the bottom of it. So in that they discover truths about themselves, about each other, and about other people. And as the book says here famously, it's a journey that will cause their world to shatter. Nothing will ever be the same again because once the mirror is broken, it can't be fixed. This was actually really interesting. I loved seeing what would happen next. I had my suspicions about what happened to Naomi. I want to say halfway through the book, but it was probably more like three quarters through the book. I had my suspicions of what had happened. And I was right, so I was super happy about that. I love getting things right because I'm such a narcissist. But also I just really enjoyed the friendship in here. These characters are in a band too, so that's really cool. It's kind of a badass book. Like if I had to look at my books and say, what's well, a kind of badass book? This would probably be one of them. It's a badass book, but in a good way. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm sick, I don't know if you can tell, so probably my brain is half jumbled and I probably should have filmed this video another day when my thoughts and feelings are more collected. But really, do you subscribe to me for quality entertainment? Or do you subscribe to me for me? Or do you subscribe one day and then you could be bothered unsubscribing because like, mm, fuck that shit. Or maybe you're just unsubscribing now when you've seen this video and you're like, nah, I'm done. I'm done with this person. Probably wouldn't blame you. Anyway, back to what I was saying. This book's badass. It deals with mystery. It deals with friendship. And it deals with some hard ass topics, if you don't mind my language. All of which I actually think it deals with in a really good way. The book also ended in a slightly open-ended way, like there could be room for another book. And I actually really hope that there is. I wouldn't feel like it was a money grab, I feel like there's more to the story. But also I'd be content if the book finished where it did as well. It's one of those kind of open ending, in a way, books. Um, but it's done really well, so don't let that put you off it. There's also, I don't want to say a plot twist because I'm not sure if there is, but there's something that's kind of revealed to you 
that wasn't made specifically clear and I had an assumption about this thing and um, it turned out I was just completely wrong and then I felt bad for assuming the thing. If you've read the book I'm, I'm assuming you probably know what I mean but that kind of made me question everything about like what I assume and then why I assume these things um, and then I kind of went like oh my gosh why I'm assuming these things you know that kind of self-doubt and am I a horrible person kind of thing so I'm really glad that that book opened up this conversation for me as well I don't want to spoil anything even though I don't think it should be a spoiler but maybe I want to leave it to you and see you know what happens when you read it maybe you have the same kind of thoughts that I did or maybe you won't assume and you know I don't know either way though I'm not going to say you'll just have to read the book okay apart from all this rambling I would rate this book a 4 out of 5 stars I quite actually really enjoyed it and I would recommend it. The last book I have to review is actually also by Hackett Australia in exchange for an honest review and that's Five Go Down Under by Enid Blyden but not really it's actually by okay it's it says Enid Blyden but text by Soph Lee Hanlon so I'm not sure if Enid Blyden maybe did the illustrations I'm not too sure how this works I read Enid Blyden's books as a child and I'm assuming she's old so I'm not sure if she's actually still alive she was one of my favorite authors um, at least I think she was an author. I don't know. This book's made me question a lot of things. And also, I'm sick. If someone could please let me know. One, if Eden Blyden was just an illustrator. Was she even an illustrator? Was she a writer? Two, is she still alive? And did she write this book? I mean, her name's right there. But also, it says, like, on the third page here, text by Sophie Hamlin. So, so I don't know. And then it says Eden Blyden for grown-ups. I don't know what this means, regardless, alright? So, I never really read um, the Five series, the famous Five series, but I was aware of it. It was actually not one that I really picked up by Enid Blyden, but I was aware of it. But I did see this one, and it was Five Go Down Under, so the Five are visiting Australia. It's really, really short. It's like about 100 pages. I think I read it in like one sitting. It was fun. Let's just say that it was fun. I didn't take it seriously. I'm not sure if anyone would. If you do though, no, no judgement. Just saying. I personally I guess didn't take it seriously it was strange let's just say that like it wasn't something that I'd be like holy shit they're gonna teach this shit in schools for years and years to come and also I prefer her childhood stories rather than either blood and for grown-ups I guess well the characters were kind of pretentious too were they like that in in childhood books versions of themselves I'm not too sure I don't know maybe I would love this book more if I'd read the famous five series as a kid. I mean, I'm not saying this book was horrible. It was just a little bit weird, really. And also weird names, like Julian, George, Anne, Timmy, and then just Dick. Dick just randomly. I liked the illustrations. I liked that it's a little hardcover book. It looks like nice quality. If you did really like Eat a Bite as a kid and the Famous Five, maybe pick this up, um, you know, as a bit of a meme, maybe. I believe there's other books in this series um, for, for grown-ups, such as Five Go Gluten-Free. Five Forget Mother's Day. Five Go Bump in the Night. I'm not sure if that's a sex one. Five on Brexit Island. Five at the office Christmas party. That's definitely a sex one. Five Get Beach Body Ready. I mean, I don't know how many of these ones are sex ones, really. This one wasn't a sex one. Maybe none of these are sex ones, but they've definitely got um, interesting titles. This one got this cradle. Five Give Up the Booze. You know? Five are doing a lot of different things in this series. I think this will probably be the only one I read in this series. It's fun, it's interesting, it's weird, but look, I have a lot of books in my future TBR. Glad I read it. I can say I tried the, the five for grown-ups, but right now I currently prefer these kind of books. So, yeah. I'd rate this one a two. It was okay. So these are the books that I reviewed for you today. I'm sorry that I filmed this when I was six, so therefore a lot of this uh, video was probably rambling of shit that you didn't understand what was happening or why it was why it was happening. But look, I was sick. I was home all day, and you know what I thought? I really ought to film a fucking video because it's been a, a long hot second. I'm gonna go back on the couch to watch more Netflix. I might do what I've been watching um, in TV series recently because I feel like I've been watching a lot of TV and I feel like it'll be fun to talk about my thoughts on them. So maybe I'll do that, but don't worry. I'll still do my book videos. When? I can't promise, but they will hopefully be out soon. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Being an adult and having a full-time job and then balancing a partner, being a mother of of two beautiful rabbits who eat couches. I'm a brother, I'm not a brother, a sister. Just being a person in life really is hard. 
and then being like, oh, look, I have this book channel on the side. Better, better film this some videos. It's hard work. But you know, none of you probably really give a shit anyway. I mean, who's actually watching this far? I doubt anyone is. I doubt I'll have any comments on this video. You know, I doubt I'll have any likes. But really, what's the point? I mean, I film these videos when I want to. And then I'm still enjoying them. And isn't that the point of YouTube, really? Especially BookTube. No one's watching these and expecting to get famous, you know, no one's filming butchy videos expect to get famous. So yeah, I guess if the long I'm happy, I will continue to do this. You don't have to watch like no one's watching right now. And that shit got quite deep for a book video on, on reviews. So I'm going to go. I'm not even going to do my normal ending. Just going to say bye. See you later, mate.